Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. We are your church. We need your power in us. We seek your kingdom first. We hunger and we thirst. Refuse to waste our lives for your our joy and prize. To see the captive hearts release the hurt, the sick, the poor at peace. We lay down our lives for heaven's cause. We are your church. We So pray to God that they'll find their targets. You know, I didn't have much to prepare. He only told me yesterday, but you know, the Lord during the night showed me a little bit of what to say here. Because he is God, he's in charge. And the reason why he has his church here on this earth, there's a reason. We're not just here to fill up pews or to sit and just walk around like zombies, no. We are the salt of this earth. We are the hope and the protection of the unbeliever. So God does not destroy this world. That's why it says if the salt gets dull, what good is it for? Men cut it down under their feet and it's good for nothing. So we need to realize why God saved you and me, not just for the fun of it, because he has a purpose for everyone here tonight, here this morning. Because he saved you, he filled you with his spirit, he put his image in you, we're born again by his spirit. Now all of a sudden, that old nature he took out and put himself in there. So we do what? Intercede for the lost. How often do we pray if there's a need? Intercede for a loved one? Intercede for the unbelievers so they won't go to hell, that God will open their eyes to the truth of the Word of God. 
It's not just going out to work every day, going home and relaxing, you put your feet up and watching TV and that. No, there's more to Christianity than that. God not saved you and me to watch TV all day long or do whatever. There is time and places for that. There's nothing wrong with sports. There's nothing wrong with it. But the priority has to be straight out. It has to be Jesus plus nothing. He comes first. And if we neglect that, say, just look at the mess the world is in today. Because the church has been going to sleep all those years. And all of a sudden we see these problems in our dictators, in our governments, in our politicians. Because they have put God aside. They don't want nothing to do with him. And that's why the devil just figured, okay, now is my time. That's why the mess that we're seeing. Because the church went to sleep. We didn't care. We shouldn't be involved in politics. So we let the unbeliever vote our politicians in. And guess what? They voted in devils. And the church didn't care. And that's what the Lord laid on my heart to bring to this church. Wake up. Because God is about to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. It's very, very close. And you don't want to be found wanting. You have to make a decision. And that will be a decision between black and white. Who do you want to serve? Like Joshua in the old. Choose you today whom you want to serve. But as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord God. And that's the only only thing that matters is to totally and completely surrender your life totally and completely to the Lord and let him use you. When there's a need, pray. When you see something in your heart, God can prompt you. If you're not available, God will not use you. You have to make yourself available. Is it day or is it night? God can use you. That's why it's so important to speak with tongues, to know the language. Sometimes I have no idea what to pray for, and all of a sudden the spiritual language just picks in. Because I have no idea, but God knows. So that's what God wanted me to encourage you, is seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all the other things will fall unto you. God loves you. Jesus went to the cross to pay for you and for me our debts and forgive us all our sins. He set us free to preach, to heal, to lay on hands on the sick for those that need it. So as we, uh, this is my introduction, so as we get into the message, as Brother Dave will take over from here, let us rise and ask the Lord to bless this service this morning. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you love us. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. I thank you for the Holy Ghost. I thank you that you love us, Lord, that you have given your life totally to us and for us. Lord, I ask you that you will bless Pastor Dave with the anointing, with power, and with strength, Lord, to bring out the word of God, that you'll be with him. Bless the listeners here, Lord, that they will hear what the Spirit has to say unto the church. I ask you to bless this service in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. The Lord bless you. We're in a time where everything's tried. The question is, how serious are we with the God that we claim to know? When you study yourself, who is this God? You wait for a God that just delivers everything? Do you live, wait for a God that tests you? Or do you wait for a God that tells you, hey, get moving? If you got Jesus in your heart, if you're one of those who have Assurance of salvation. I want you to listen to this. If you have assurance of salvation, you have a special authority. 
Think about it. You have a special authority on you because you know that you know what you're talking about. As we look at what's going on out there, we can see things are dead or they're alive. All depends who you listen to. Some things are bubbling, some things are boiling, some things are cooking, and some things you wonder how long will they survive. God has a word. I'm in charge. Things will happen according to how I bring it about, and there's nobody that will be able to change it. They've tried to change it for 2,000 years. Satan found despots that tried to change God's plan over and over and they were pushed back again and again. When this COVID started, I was actually listening to a message today on radio that I preached Five years ago, I was asking myself, did I preach this message today? Hope they don't kick me off the radio. Because it was so dead on. I could not believe the words that were common. Straight out, just the way the government works, the way everybody operates. But God has something in mind. I believe God has something in mind. I've heard it years ago. God told it to me. Put it in your heart. I'm going to do a work. I'm going to do a work amongst those people who are lukewarm, who are more interested in sports, who are more interested in deer hunting, who are more interested in their daily lives. I'm going to put a work in them and change them. And that's what's going to happen. He will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. We're going to see the power of God move that we've never, ever seen before. Yes, not too many believe it. That's okay. God says it'll happen. But he wants to warn us. He wants to know us to know what will happen after these things happen. After God gets finished with this word, after he's finished with all the, all the despots that's out there, and he gives you signs, and he look, tells you to look so you can know where you stand. What's the time of the clock? We're fast running out of time. Luke 21, verse 25. And there shall be signs in the sun, in the moon, in the stars, upon the earth, distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear. We see that all over the place. Men's hearts failing them for fear. You hear more and more uh, messages come out on YouTube. How the doctor treated people in the hospitals. How they vaccinated them. How they just wouldn't care. I want to know is there ever going to be a reckoning 
for them doctors? Yes, there will. I can assure you there will. Will they be reckoned here on earth? I don't know. You know how human beings are. They got bleeding hearts. Oh, they tried their best. Maybe we should be lenient on them. I've heard that all my life with people. But God wants us to understand men's hearts are failing them for fear. Why are they afraid? First of all, the death grip is death. Everybody's afraid of death. That's why you see people mess. They're afraid of death. Instead of turning to Jesus, finding the antidote, they'll wear masks, even whole body armor, instead of turning to this God. But God says, don't worry, I got things in control. Even if things go wrong for you, I've got things in control. It says, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. They shall see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. And let me tell you, when he comes back, it's too late. Have you made your decision? Do you know that you know that you have God? Do you want to follow him with your whole heart? Or is God somehow second in command? Once I'm finished here, then I'm going to do maybe something. Well, God watches us. He's not a spoiled sport. He's not against sports. He's not against having a good time. But if your heart it's in this world system. He will have a talk with you. I was reading the children of Israel. God pleaded with them. He said, come, let's reason together. And when you go through that old chapter, what did they do? They didn't care. They brought forth their golds, idols of gold, their idols of wood went up into the mountains and worshipped them, forgetting about the God that fed them, that gave them everything, thumbing their nose at him as they worshipped their useless idols. And that's the problem with many of today's world. But the problem is, Today we think we're self-sufficient. We can do it. But there's coming a day when there's not be going to be anything to eat. I was studying my radio message. The day is coming when all the water will turn to blood. A man will work a whole day to get a piece of bread. It's coming. Why do I know that? Because it's written. And we need to be ready for that. How do we get ready? Luke 21. Then shall be signs in the sun, the moon, the stars, upon the earth, distress of nations. I think I read that one. I'll go to Luke 21, 28. And when these things come to pass, listen, when these things come to pass, are they coming to pass? Yes, they are. Just look outside, put on your TV. When these things come to pass, then look up, lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. If you got God, it's drawing nigh. Not too long ago, I was preaching, listening to a preacher, and the power of God 
was moving in that church. People were healed. They were got rid of their sickness and diseases. They were just, by the grace of God, just brought to a place where they rejoiced in God. And the pastor said to God, man, I'm flying. I love what I'm seeing. He says, and God spoke to him, oh no, you're not flying, you're dead. Well, look at the people getting saved. Look at them turning to God. Look at them getting healed. But you're not telling them of my coming so they can tell others. You need to tell people that Jesus is coming soon so they can get ready. Are you doing that? Maybe on Facebook, maybe at work. You have to do it because we've been called. It says when these, begin, these things begin to come to pass, look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. That means it's coming close. We better get ready for it. It's been 2,000 years since Jesus said, I'm coming. And we're getting closer as each day goes by. Are you ready? Now listen to this. So likewise, when you see these things begin to come to pass, Look up, know you that the kingdom of heaven, God is nigh at hand. Verily I say unto you, the generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. <coughs> are we that generation? We are seeing those things. And it's not very pretty. So the Bible teaches we're going to see Jesus coming back because we are that generation who will see God coming back. So look up, lift up your heads because this is serious. The generation will not, not pass away till all things be fulfilled. I believe I'm part of that generation. Unless God takes me home shortly, I'm going to see, I'm seeing Jesus coming back. Now I want to give you one last warning here. Luke chapter 21. Take heed to yourselves. He's talking to the Christians. Least at any times your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting, with drunkenness drunkenness, that's partying, and cares of this life, so that the day come upon you unaware. For as a snare, it shall come upon all that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Not half of them, not just the Mennonites, not just the Hutterites, it'll come upon all the world. This is not a fairy tale. He's coming. He's going to take us unto himself. Watch you therefore. Pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all those things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. He's telling us to watch. Be careful. Live for God because we wanted to be accounted worthy to go with him because he's going to take us up in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, and then it'll all be too late. So he's definitely warning us. Watch you therefore, 
pray always that you're accounted worthy. Have a relationship with Christ. Don't just have a two-minute prayer. Talk to him all day. Argue with him if you have to. These days, I argue a bit with him. So it's big deal, but he listens. He's my God. He created me, and he saved me. And he's asking me, watch, be careful. For you want to be accounted worthy to escape all those things. What all those things? Have you ever studied the book of Revelation? It's a horrifying book. The people in the book of Revelation will be killed and massacred by the thousand. So much as mentioning God will get your head chopped off or something worse. God is warning you, be careful that you will escape that time. That time will be so horrific that there's only going to be blood to drink. Who wants to drink blood? There's not going to be any food to eat. The way the banks are operating with their money today, we can take out a, a, a checkbook or we can use a card. During the tribulation, they will throw their gold, their silver out into the streets. It will have absolutely no value because the Mr. Antichrist will be running everything and he will be no respecter of person. His own bodyguards will be fed to the lions or to the alligators because he's that type of person. So watch it. Be careful. The Bible says make sure you're accounted worthy to escape all these things that you come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Let the Lord open your heart to this and make you a blessing to yourself so that you can relax, be at peace, and be ready for this great God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, soul, I worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul. I'll worship your holy name. in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship your holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come. 
Still my soul will sing your praise unending Ten thousand years and then forevermore Forevermore, bless the Lord, O oh my soul Oh, my soul, worship his holy name Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your 